If you're a knife lover, I feel like the last few years has really been like the golden age of innovation, particularly in pocket knives with so many different features, locking mechanism, blade steels that have been coming out at such high rates of speed. But what often ends up happening, particularly with innovation, is that it comes at a very high price point. The knife industry reminds me a lot of the vehicle industry. You know, you have these Lexus and Acura models with all this technology and all of these new innovations that are gonna cost you a pretty penny to access. Then over the next five to 10 years, those technologies trickle down into the Toyotas and the Hondas. Well, Civivi is speeding up the process of getting innovation into the hands of the average knife user at more affordable prices with the recent release of the Vision FG with the Superlock. Now I'm really looking forward to unpacking this design, particularly how this locking mechanism works, really testing it by doing a bunch of spine thwack. So we're gonna see how it holds up after the fact and really discover what these innovations provide, but also, highlight a few aspects in the design that are kind of driving me nuts. And it's funny because when I saw the value at about $80, I immediately hopped on over to Amazon, I placed an order, and while the knife was in transit, I actually got a separate package mailed to me from Civivi with the exact same blade, same blade coating, same handle material that I had ordered from Amazon. So I'm just gonna do a giveaway, hook one of you lucky viewers up and give you guys all the details a little later on in the video, so stay tuned. Thanks. For joining me. I'm Aaron. This is Gideon's Tactical. Let's dive in. Got to get juiced up there with the high octane coffee. Now, I know you guys are probably chomping at the bit to know all about the super lock and how it handles with those spine thwacks and batoning tasks that I will put this through. But first, I want to highlight just the blade itself because I'm really connecting lately with these compound grinds. We saw this last week uh, when I did this on the Iona from Giant Mouse, where it's a high flat that transitions in the tip is basically a full flat. Same on this. We have a very high saber that goes to about center of the blade, and then we have a full flat grind down towards that Warncliffe tip right there. The tip is gonna be directly in line with the back pommel. So just great symmetry right there. You're looking at the cutting edge. Let me double check here. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be like 3.2 inches actual cutting edge, eighth of an inch thick spine. That holds that pretty good to a very precise tip. This is not a screwdriver. You don't wanna be cranking on that tip side to side, but what it means is it's very precise. And I really enjoyed the precision that it was giving me in a lot of utility tasks that I was doing. Cardboard cutting, of course, but like, you know, if you needed to manipulate it and carve a particular angle or something or a particular uh, sweep with the tip, it's able to be grabbed and you're able to put your finger right on top of that Warren cliff and then really do what needs to be done. And there's a uh, somewhat of a sweep, you know, so it's not a full like tanto edge. And because of the more of the geometry of the blade just itself going up at an angle to meet the point leads to great acceleration through different types of cuts. Now the steel that was chosen is Nitro V and I've actually had that on a few other Civivis and I've been pleased with the overall performance. They state that they rock well 59 to 61 on the hardness scale. Now, if you're not familiar with Nitro V, it is a stainless steel it is actually a modified version of AEBL steel with more nitrogen and vanadium in it. So it's gonna have good wear resistance, not amazing. Uh, it's gonna be probably pretty comparable to what you'll see on a lot of Sandvik steels, like meaning Sandvik 14C28N, um, obviously AB, uh, AEBL. Uh, and it's going to be much tougher than steels like M390 and LMAX. So it gives you kind of this good medium grade, if you will, stainless steel performance. So happy with it, particularly at the price point of sub $100 um, to get all the other features that we're gonna look at. It's gonna hold a decent edge, it's stainless, and it's not too difficult to put an edge back on it. Now as we're about to discover whether or not the super lock is really all that super, is it reliable, and does it add to the streamlined functionality of the tool, I can tell you one item that has always been super functional and helped streamline my hydration process when I'm on trail and going out on my adventures. It's today's sponsor, which is Hardside Hydration and their Swig Rig 
set up. There's a reason why I'm glad they're part of our affiliate network and a regular sponsor here at the channel is because this American based small business has come up with a very unique solution. Having the hands free capability of a hydration hose, but have it draw water from the exterior of my pack in one of my favorite rigid water bottles, regardless if it's a 48 ounce Nalgene like this, or any small mouth 28 millimeter sized bottle like this smart water bottle. And that's exactly what the swig rig system does. It gets that water outside of my pack much easier to see where the water level is, much easier to refill through uh, water filters on trail, and then quickly disconnect and continue to use that same bottle, regardless if I'm at camp or I get back to my vehicle. And eliminates all the headache of cleaning and storing those structureless large water bladders. But these things are awesome and allow me to transport my hydration in a much simpler, easier, and more effective way. So I invite you guys to check out the link in the description below this video over to the hard side website, where you can see all the different features, capabilities, and options that are available through the swig rig system, as well as other accessories that they offer. And don't forget about that exclusive promo code that will be included as well. That will give you 10% off your purchase. So hop on over and streamline your water system. So now to what we're all really here for this super lock, the innovation. Now, this has been around uh, first with we knives design. The design is the vision as well. And it's from the same designer. Snex tan is the designer that I, on my understanding is came up with this locking mechanism. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong in the, the um, comments. This is different than the shark lock that I previously reviewed on the Demco knives AD series. So it's similar in idea, but definitely is designed differently, functions differently. There is a spring in there that pushes the entire solid bar up against the back spine, and then you press to release that. So that's how it operates. Now, what I really like is that they punched a hole on the front end there, so you can actually see how it engages. That was really smart. I like it. Not only does it just give a cool for those who like to see how things work. So I like that. That's cool. It's just like you can see what it is doing. You see how it drops in there, grabs it, then you pull back and that releases it. Apparently on the more premium Wii version, you could actually like depress and pull the bar completely out as a, as a way to disassemble the tool. This is not designed that way. So you can't do that. It's not going to like pull out and release. So if you own the Wii version or you've seen videos on the Wii version, you're a little concerned about that. That is not at all how this operates. You cannot depress and like pull the lock bar, the the bar, the locking mechanism out. So you can't do that. Um, huge stop pin on the back. That's really impressive. And before I talk about just manipulation, let's see how durable it truly is. So I began with some spine thwax, really concerned, like is it gonna hop out of that catch that the super lock is doing? It did not. I was really pleased with that. Several spine thwax that didn't loosen up, make any wobbling or kind of jam the lock. So that was very impressive to start with. Then I flipped it over and I be began to do those spine thwax through a piece of wood to make some notching, which I would never normally do with a pocket knife. I do not recommend that, but we, we're testing here, right? We gotta see what it does. And I'm filming this video after having done that testing. So you can just see the functionality and how it is still operating, not jamming. Uh, there's no rock, there's no loosening that I'm experiencing at all. So that's pretty super in the durability department. Now, uh, manipulation, you got a pretty good catch right there. It's not as sharp as the shark lock on the Demco knives. So it feels a little bit more comfortable. Every once in a while, because there is no jimping, only on the top, I will slide off of it just because it's you know slick metal. But for the most part, I'm able to catch it without much difficulty. You can do that you know wrist flick, if you will. It will suck in the blade right about I don't know, whatever we would call that, maybe 45 degrees, 30 degrees, it'll suck it in the rest of the way. Now in a moment, I'll highlight whether or not this causes any hot spots ergonomically when I, we talk about the handle, but in overall functionality, and actually there is jimping, I'm sorry. I totally missed that. There is a little hit of jimping, it's just so light that I have slid off again. I have slid up and it's not as sharp as the shark lock from Demco knives. 
the tip is really buried in there, so you ain't gonna be accidentally pulling that out. Now, deployment-wise, we have ambidextrous thumb studs that are protruding. They don't block the blade at all for either resharpening or for cutting purposes, so that's excellent that they're placed in the right place. So then it's got bronze caged ball bearings, so cage bronze, and then that cages ball bearings in there. So that means we're gonna have an ever so slight wobble side to side like most ball bearings do. None, I have zero play up and down after all of that spine hitting. So very well done on that front. But this is where the first annoyance comes into play. And I don't know if you guys have been picking up on it with the audio. Let me see if you can hear it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. There we go, you can kind of hear it. it. It may not be coming out through the audio, hopefully it does. It squeaks like a pack of mice. I don't know what you would call a group of mice, but a pack of mice, it is squeaky. There you go, you can hear that right there. It, it, yeah, it's a that's just a high-pitched whine often when I hit it with metal on metal. So I'm trying to determine where the sound is coming from and I haven't narrowed it down yet. Um, that It's just annoying. It's not the end of the world, but it's annoying. And I don't like that and I wish that that was not the case on my particular model and I don't know if that's the case across the board or not. So first annoyance, and I will have links in the description below to the vision as well as some competitive options that I will highlight a little bit later to all the affiliate networks I regularly partner with. So if it's time for a gear purchase, regardless if it's this tool or any other, always appreciate it when you use those links. Now to the handle. This is black micarta. I love micarta on my handles, on my pocket knives. I totally am addicted to it. I have several now and it's amazing. You can get them with G10 handle scales as well. If for some reason you're just not a fan of micarta or just the color pattern just isn't for you. Now the handle length is gonna be 4.45. So good handle length. It's gonna be just a hair under uh, half an inch. It's like 0 0.48 according to my measurement on thickness. So that's good thickness. It is a little heavy at 4.1. Not bad, particularly if you like that, but it's just something to be aware of. With so many people chasing lightweight pocket knives lately, there's the balance point for you, kind of definitely on the, the last third, I'd say. The, right, it's right in front of that first hole on the handle is where the balance point is, basically. Right there. So um, it's, it's really square, though. So this is the second aspect. It's really clunky in my hand. I mean, it's like... There's no cut-ins and all that other stuff, but the angles, you know, it's completely flat and then kind of an angled transition on all the sides. And so that's the thing that I mainly noticed was just like, it feels kind of blocky. And I'm thinking of the Civivi Conspirator, one of the first Civivis I ever picked up, button lock. And I mean, it was just like, it's it's the edges are rounded, so it feels more organic and comfortable. You have a little bit, just an ever so slight sweep. Also has Nitro V, also about 80 bucks. Um, very high flat grind, button lock, you know, ambidextrous, all that stuff. Uh, flow through construction. And yeah, ergonomically, if you were to be like, hey, which one do you like more? I way like the Ergos on the, on the Conspirator more for the same price. It's not terrible. I'm not like, ugh, you know, like in painful. And you can definitely bear down. It's not going to create any hot spots. It just feels, it reminds me of like my Ontario rats, you know, just kind of clunky, doesn't feel as refined. So that is something to note. The steel liners are flush with the micarta. They're not protruding. So I like that. That's really good. No lanyard hole. There is like a back post. Yeah, that the blade doesn't even get close to. So if you like lanyards, you can run it on that back post right there. Now, ergonomically also, two other things to note. The first is the super lock will not cause any problems. When you grip the tool like that, it just goes right in the webbing of your, your hand and you don't even know it's there. Because it's just a gradual kind of ramp, if you do your thumb rest, same thing. You can see there you're not even really engaging it with your thumb. If you choke up, same thing, you're not even touching it. So the, the, the lock is not an ergonomic issue because of the placement and the way your hand would grip the tool in any grip, even in a reverse grip. It's on the back side of that meat right there and you don't even realize it. It just feels like almost like a natural thumb ramp that we would have on a lot of other knives. Now, there is this choil that is functional that you can choke up get to it. It does. It's not like a Spyderco choil. So I like that because more of it's just, it's the design flows, like it flows well with that. And the, the edge even is kind of at an angle. So I haven't been bit by it, but I can definitely get my full index finger in there, choke up, really control the knife. No issues on that front. 
And I like that it's at an angle so that if you were to catch rope or cordage in there, it will, the, the sweep is so gradual that it will send it into the blade to then continue to cut and it won't like gunk, stop a slice through cordage or um, like a strap or something like that. So that was really well designed. One thing though that is just more of a fit and finish thing is you can see there the end of where of the the spine is protruding doesn't it doesn't create an undue hot spot but if they just continued the handle scale and just encapsulated that it would have given a better flow i think to the design and probably helped ever so slightly with ergonomics using the choil but the ergonomics are not perfect and it has to do with this freaking pocket clip now the nice thing is you can see here on the other side they have actually machined down where the pocket clip goes and then with recessed screws, flush screws, that, that is what the best for deep ride. You're not gonna bog down. It's still gonna get over any pocket that I own, like double reinforced pockets or anything like that. So well done. That is that is so well executed, blacked out. So you're, you know it's not gonna be showing. But I don't know if you can see that freaking vulture bill of a grab that Civivi likes to do on a lot of their pocket clips. That is so obnoxious. It's gonna scratch stuff. It's gonna catch on to the, things all over the place and it does not feel comfortable if you're really bearing down on the tool it is biting my hand like crazy they need to redesign the pocket clip and it definitely hampers the ergonomics when you're doing hard long cuts for an extended period of time now before i run into competitive options and really unpack how does it stack up compared to the competition uh let's talk about that giveaway to get entered in a win you need to go to the Gideon's tactical youtube homepage then you're gonna see like uploads, playlists, go to the community section, click that, there will be a photo with a post with this knife and it'll have all the details on how to get entered in a win, when I'll pick the winner at random and all the information and I'll be picking a random winner from the comments on that community post. So hop on over there and get yourself entered in a win and I look forward to hooking up one lucky viewer. So now, what about this blade? How does it stack up to the competition? And would it be my first choice? The innovation and a lot of the aspects for around $80 that you would get with the Vision are really cool. And if you are just a knife lover and you've been wanting something like this, but the Wii version just is way outside the price point and the Demco series is either just not the design you're really looking for, or again, they're just more expensive, then this is going to give you a lot of performance and innovation with definitely a few hangups that I have seen. Now, if you're gonna ask me, hey man, I got 80 bucks to spend and I've been looking at the Conspirator and I've been looking at the Vision, which one, like this is gonna be my purchase for the next six months of pocket knives. For me personally, the Conspirator is easy. The, the profile is just more organic from my experience. The button lock is still gonna give you tons of functionality and fun. You've got the flipper as well as just the button action. And then the handle ergonomics are definitely, for me, more enjoyable. I like the handle ergonomics on this more. That's not to say the Vision is bad. It definitely gets the job done. And if you like choils on your knives, you like a lot of spider codes, and you just wanna try this action out, there's a lot to like about the design. Honestly, if they had put this lock on something like the Conspirator, I think I would just like be over the moon. As it stands, there's some really cool features and I'm looking forward to seeing this super lock on more of CVV's designs. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. What do you think though about the super lock in general, that concept? What do you think about this vision design in general? And I always appreciate your guys' comments, your feedback, your thoughts. I look forward to hearing from you guys and engaging with you. And until next time, I invite you to check out the other video popping up to subscribe and always remember, Stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.